Hello, my name is Lynn Gillespie, and I will be your guide to discover the 12 high-performance garden characteristics with weekly training videos. A high-performance garden is one of the most fun, productive, and organic gardening experiences you will ever have. A garden that is enjoyable, weed-free, productive, and so very easy to achieve. Hi, I'm Lynn Gillespie, organic farmer and creator of the Abundance Garden course. We are here today to teach you about the high performance characteristic number one, which is in harmony with nature. All high performance gardens are, are organic, and organic gardens will sometimes get pests and will need an organic solution to get the pests back under control. The beet leaf miner is a major pest for spinach, beets, and Swiss chard. The leaf miner lives in between the top and bottom layers of the leaves and is very hard to kill with sprays or powders, whether you're organic or not. The adult is a gray fly that lays its eggs on the underside of the leaves. Let me show you, I have a couple samples here. All right, so this is how it all starts. Here's the eggs. This is actually a beet leaf and you can see the little cluster of eggs here. And this is what the gray adult fly lays and there's usually, I don't know, 10 to 12, up to 12 eggs um, in a cluster. Okay, so this is how it starts. This is the underside of the leaves. Okay, then the next stage, let me find you on. I have some more samples here. Okay, here's the next stage. Once the eggs uh, hatch out, then the little larvae burrows down into the leaf and actually starts to make its home between the top and the bottom of the leaf. So it's actually in between the leaves and it starts to make these little tunnels. These are called mines. So the eggs, they hatch out in four to six days and then we start seeing the mines in the leaves. So as you're out in your garden, start looking for these things. If you have it, then you have a leaf miner. Um, they will live for two weeks inside the leaf and the next thing that they do is they actually make the leaf start to form a blister. See this is a big blister here and if you take the leaf and you look look up at it at the sky you can actually see oh yeah this one's got one in it you can actually see the leaf miner inside there. Let me pull this apart and I'll show you the leaf miner in there mining. Ew, there he is right there. You see that guy? So once they've eaten enough food, then they pupate. They either pupate in the leaf or they'll drop down into the soil and they'll pupate there. And then they hatch out into a fly and the whole thing starts over again. And it takes them uh, two to four weeks to hatch out once they pupate depending on the uh, temperatures of the day and night. So this guy is looking for his home. He's trying to get back. Um, on this side of the leaf, I believe we have a larva that's been parasitized. Nope, it's just a trail. Just a trail left from this guy. Okay, so that's the cycle of the leaf miner. Okay, there's three methods of control for your leaf miner. The first one is to just scour through your bed and any of the leaves that you see that are starting to get the blistery look or the eggs on the back, then you just simply want to remove these. And when you remove these, then I suggest that you take them clean away from your garden. I wouldn't even put them in the compost. I like to give mine to the chickens. Um, if you don't have chickens, then go ahead and put them in the trash. But you don't want this to sit around in a compost pile and then have the larvae actually finish hatching. So just get them clean out of the building. Okay, so that's the first one. The second one is you can apply, um, it's a new organic pesticide called Spinosad and it sort of works. The way that it works is that the bug has to actually ingest it. So if you spray it on the surface of the leaf but the bug is not eating all the way to the surface, then he may not ingest it. 
So it, it sort of works sometimes, not all the time. Um, that's something that you can try if you want to. The third way is to release a parasitic wasp, and this is what we like to do. So I found this little parasitic wasp that will search out and destroy the leaf miner larvae. And this has been a very effective way, um, it's a very effective organic way for us to keep the leaf miner under control. And its name is Diglyphus, and it's only like two millimeters long, and it can't sting us, so you don't have to worry about that. I have some that has just arrived in the mail. I order these and I will show you if you can look right through here you can see them crawling on the inside of the vial. So the way that this little tiny wasp works is it hunts down the larvae that are in the mining tube. So it doesn't go after the adult, it goes after the larvae that is um, inside the leaves. What it does is it kills it and then um, the parasitic wasp will lay its eggs next to the larvae. Then what happens is the larvae is dead and in 16 days the wasp eggs actually hatch out and they eat the larvae. So that's their food source. Um, these little guys, the parasitic wasps, they will actually pupate inside the leaf and they will hatch out as adults and then they'll fly around and find another um, leaf miner larvae that's mining in a tube and they'll sting that one. So the whole cycle starts over again. Um, these little guys can parasitize up to 300 leaf miners in their lifetime and their, their life cycle is about four weeks. Uh, they're only active when it's warm, so between 60 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit is the best temperature for them. And you can tell that these guys have done their job um, when you're looking at the leaf and the uh, the tunnel stops and you don't you don't get the big blister forming then you can tell that these guys have done their jobs so they're pretty neat um, I order these from a company called Hyder Gardens they're in Colorado Springs Colorado the neat thing about being able to use the biological insects to control other insects um, is the fact that we don't have to use pesticides and actually we can't use pesticides so if we're releasing these guys into our fields then the pesticides will bother them as well so it's important not to do that um, as far as release can't be any simpler you just open the lid tap it and they will fly out into the crop and you want to put these on uh, spinach swiss chard and beets that's where you want to release these Okay, I hope you have enjoyed um, our little visit with the Diglyphus parasitic wasps and I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. And if you'd like more information about high performance gardening, then go to our website, thelivingfarm.org. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you next week for another edition of the High Performance Garden Training Video Series. Want access to more videos like this? Click the link in the description below this video to join the High Performance Garden community for free. Community members receive weekly high performance garden video trainings, articles, and trade secrets delivered directly to your inbox. Do you know anyone else who is frustrated and struggling with their garden? Share this video so they can begin to transform their garden into a high performance garden too. They'll thank you later. If you want to transform your garden into a high-performance garden in one season, you can enroll in the Abundance Garden Course, the only gardening course where you can garden step-by-step -step with your gardening coach. Click the link in the description below this video to learn more about the Abundance Garden Course. If you have a topic you would like us to make a video about, please send us an email. Or if you have a gardening question, you can also email us at the living farm at tds.net. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. May your garden be easy, fun, productive, and always organic.